Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Dragon Ball Nation. Today I'm going to be giving you guys another Dragon Ball Super Review. And this week's episode, episode 74, was like I thought it was going to be pretty solid. Not the greatest episode ever, of course, but I don't think anyone expected that. But I do think it was strong and had a lot of very uh, good points about it. Especially some little subtleties I liked with Gohan. But the episode starts off with, like in the last episode, Jocko was firing a laser at... Gohan, who's the Great Saiyan Man. Jocko doesn't know who the Great Saiyan Man is, though, so he's not aware it's Gohan. Gohan explains that it's him, you know, don't shoot me, all that stuff. And then Jocko kind of talks about what Wadagash is, you know, this parasite that infected uh, those bank, the bank robber before in the last episode, and the one who had escaped from Jocko's possession. Expa he explains that Wadagash infects people, uh, feeds off their evil heart and powers them up the more evil they are so it's almost like this is all coming off of hers from Konzenshu by the way on Twitter so check out his Twitter down below of course every single week check out his Twitter if you have not and he does not only do Dragon Ball Super he does a lot of stuff for the community so check him out but it's almost kind of like the Majin charm um, even though it's not really the more evil you are the more powered up you is but it does feed off of their evil regardless but in this case, it is the more evil in their heart, the more powered up they get. So that's important, and that that's like honestly a little bit OP in some aspects. If you think about what characters could be applied with that, like imagine if he had infected Vegeta and in the and the Boo Saga. I mean, there would be absolutely no chance for anyone to have defeated him just based on how strong um, you know Barry gets in this episode. And you saw Barry gets possessed in this episode. Um, from the preview, we know that happens, and he gets really, really powerful. Um, but Gohan needs to help Jocko. Um, promises Jocko says, you know, I promise not to tell your wife about this stuff with this girl. And you know, he basically thinks that Gohan's hooking up with this girl and stuff, but it's not. You know, the girl he was given a ride uh, with. Barry kind of shows off he's really just a, a huge dick in this episode, mostly, and it's not really any surprise. The the girl wants to go practice lines with him. Um, Barry also is like p poking around, taking pictures of Gohan with this girl. Um, who, I mean, he kind of later does use it as blackmail in a way. But she kisses him, which you think will be some huge, huge thing. Uh, Gohan is seen by Barry flying away. So Barry pretty much thinks this is the real great Saiyan man, right? So he goes to Gohan's house, shows Videl and Gohan the pictures. Videl sees them kissing, you know, him and the girl kissing. And I knew instantly, I'm like, she's this is going to be BS. She's just going to not care. She's going to punch Barry in the face. And what happens is she rips up the pictures. I knew there wouldn't be um, anything like that. But, well, she says, like, I feel sorry for, Bar you know, you to have to resort to fraud. So maybe that means she didn't believe the pictures in the first place. But I guess whatever. But Barry is then uh, taken over by Wadagash, which I guess it, it, it was important to show how much of a dick Barry was. I wouldn't really say evil, though. I mean, I would probably say those bank, the bank robbers were more evil than Barry. But the way Barry gets powered up, he's exceeded base form Gohan when he transforms later, which is crazy. One thing that was cool, when Barry goes to kidnap Pan on the wall, Herm says it, 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 it translates to, um, Barry wrote on the wall, it says, I'll, I'll be waiting at the TV station. And Herm says the TV station that they're waiting on, that he's waiting on, looks just like the Fuji TV headquarters. So that's kind of crazy that they would have that there. That's like, that's like some really cool stuff right there, in my opinion. But Barry's there waiting with Pan. He stole Pan to get... Gohan to follow him. I mean, I think Gohan would have followed him no matter what. But Gohan, Barry transforms and gets into like this second form Barry type of thing, transformed Wadagash thing. I don't know how the transformation stuff works with him, but I thought it was cool to have that included. Um, and he does later transform into that blue monster form that we saw in the preview. And that thing is massive. It's building size. Uh, and I didn't think it was going to be that big, but Damn, it is huge, and it is powerful. Extremely, extremely powerful. Stronger than base Gohan, so 
you know, power scalers out there are going to tell me where Gohan is, you know. I mean, this guy would probably have to be somewhere close to Fat Boo, just based on how logically strong Gohan would be, even though people think Gohan got super, super weak. But everyone's watching thinking this is uh, part of the movie, but the director of the movie for The Great Same and, and his crew go up the stairs and like they're capturing this live footage, so I thought that was kind of cool they kind of squeezed that in there. Um, and there's a point where they're fighting on the Dragon Ball, well Herm says at least, the Dragon Ball version of Tokyo Tower, see this is stuff I wouldn't know. Um, and this is something that was, this is the same tower that was seen in Wrath of the Dragon. Um, I don't really remember that, but that's because I haven't seen Wrath of the Dragon in like two and a half years. Um, I know it's a lot of people's favorite movie, and it's just one of my favorites. It's not my favorite, but it is one of the best Dragon Ball movies, I think. But it's cool they bring that. They're doing a very good job in Super of bringing older stuff back. Even though, if you really think about the grand scheme of things, Wrath of the Dragon isn't that old in terms of how many episodes it was ago. You know, it was a film, obviously, after the Boo Saga, but many years ago, but in the grand scheme of the series, it wasn't really that long, I guess. But you know what I mean. It's awesome that they're bringing all of this stuff back. They do a very good job of that in Super. But Barry does get, you know, transform and he is overpowering Gohan. And I like the way this episode goes. Gohan turns Super Saint up in the sky by Videl and Pan cheering him, um, you know, cheering for him and stuff. He goes Super Saiyan and the director calls it Super Great Saiyan Man. So that is awesome that they get like this cool name and then he powers up a Kamehameha to eliminate Wadagash and he calls it the super great Sandman beam so it completely obliterates them but it was kind of like that classic enemy powers up but then the hero powers up and eliminates the enemy instantly that kind of formula so I mean you can either love it or hate it there wasn't a whole lot of actual fighting going on it was mostly Gohan getting wrecked um, and then you know, him powering up. But Wadagas is eliminated, Barry is still alive, um, and the movie for The Great Saiyan Man actually gets released, and Goku's family all go see it. Goku fell asleep during it, but everyone else loved it. Like, it's cool to see this revival of people's, like, their um, engagement with The Great Saiyan Man again, you know, just them all being excited about it. I think that's really cool. It's some nice development for Gohan, too. I like that. One scene I really did enjoy a lot in this episode. It's so small of a scene. But when Barry's in Gohan's house, and he's so pissed off at Gohan, yo. He grabs him by the shirt. If you saw the scene, he grabs Gohan by the shirt, telling him off. Trying to act like a big man, right? And then Gohan just puts his hand on Barry's chest and blasts him back a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, just to push him back. Just to be like, you know, listen, asshole. I know. I'm... I'm way stronger than you right now i just like that gohan showing some dominance there that was really cool of a scene i thought um there's gonna be people being like oh where was vegeta where was goku you know when all this stuff was going down with the fight and I'm, i could say i don't know um just turn your brain off for it but overall i really did like the episode it ends off with jocko okay one scene i didn't really like because it kind of seems stupid was it ends off with jocko at the same ramen uh place where he was in the last episode and the Wadagash, Wadagash's like chamber, his container he's in, just starts cracking. And it looks like he's going to escape again. Um, so I don't know if it's he's ever going to come back in the series or if they're just trying to show like, okay, he'll never catch him. I don't really know. Um, it kind of seems stupid, but at the same time, I guess it was kind of cool. Like, I don't really know. It could, it could have really just not been there and it wouldn't have had an effect on the episode, honestly. But overall, I enjoyed the episode a lot, a lot better than the last episode, and I thought there were some cool little points about it. So, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, if I missed anything to talk about, let me know. Uh, I think I pretty much covered everything, though. Next week's episode looks kind of cool, but stay tuned for my predictions tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you hated it, feel free to dislike uh, and uh, comment your thoughts down below. But other than that, let's thank you guys for watching, and of course, I'll catch you later.